Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. I'm Tom Dorsey, and we've got a great show for you today. I know I've been teasing you a little bit with kind of leading into this. I tried to get Tom on last week, but he was going to go hunting slash caught COVID, but I'll let him tell you all about it. Uh, but we got him on this week. And so, you know, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, a trailblazer, Tom Braun from Tuffy Tire and Auto Service in Clinton Township, Michigan. Welcome, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hey, buddy. And of course, as always, we've got half of our expert panel of experts on, Bill Connor and Uva Kleinschmidt. Welcome, gentlemen. Good day. Good morning. And, you know, both of the, actually all three of us have been working with Tom and, you know, kind of through this journey. And I think it's going to be a great episode and a great story for you folks to hear, whether you're on the fence, whether you're in the trenches, you know, maybe just getting started and kind of struggling and you need a little boost to persevere because we've got a, exactly that is a story of perseverance for you today. As a matter of fact, I've titled the uh, episode where there's a will, there's a way. Because I think in a nutshell, Tom, that is kind of what we would, how we could classify your journey to the point that you're at now. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. Yes. And so tell us a little bit kind of about how we got to this point, right? How, how did you decide to go, you know, you know, start us off with, tell us about your operation. What's Tuffy all about? What are you doing up there in Clinton Township? Um, so my shop is located in Clinton Township, Michigan, um, just north of Detroit, um, it's a franchise location. The Tuffy Tire and Auto Service franchise has about 170 stores in the network. Um, I've been here 14, well, coming up on 14 years in May. Um, the, I bought my store. I worked here. I started off as a technician, like most, most shop owners out there, right? We started off as a technician. We worked our way up, um, took over the store as a general manager. And then um, in May, uh, coming up here seven years ago, I purchased the location. Um, so, so that's where I'm at. That's, that's how I, that's how I got my store. Um, and um, do you want to get right into the yeah, digital? Sure. So, so, and tell us a little bit. So, so you, you know, worked as a tech there, took over as an owner and then decided to go digital we'll just we'll just leave it at that because that's kind of how we were introduced to you right yeah you know how our relationship developed and so give us a little insight yeah it's not something that the franchise was doing uh no. it's something that you kind of uh decided on and i would say had a vision for uh mm -hmm. you know explain a yeah, little bit so, to us how you came to that so back back when i bought the store um well, previous to buying the store, when I was just a general manager, I wanted to get into digital inspections. I had, um, I had originally sat in on a uh, webinar or or an advertisement for Auto Vitals back. I don't know, it had to be 2012 ish. Wow. Um, and and seeing just a digital inspection, and 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 I had always struggled to get my technicians to compl fully 100% complete a paper inspection. That was always a challenge, and and. I was a believer in it. I know that, you know, McDonald's made tons of money asking if they want fries with that. Right. So for us, we just wanted to, I wanted to get a system in place where it was easy for the technicians to do what I wanted them to do. Um, so I reached out to auto vitals and started learning about the digital inspection platform back then. Um, and Tuffy as a franchise company, they limit us to what point of sale softwares we can use. Um, so we are using a, you know, one of the companies that they, a point of sale that, that they approved. Um, and at that time, when I reached out to that point of sale company, they unfortunately would not integrate with auto vitals because they were working on their own digital inspection platform. Um, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah and, and so, and basically, yeah, we reached out to us and we basically said, Hey, sorry, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they, they just wouldn't do it. Um, so it, you know, an auto vital said, you know, look for the, in order for the, program to work properly it, it has to integrate i mean it's just it's, it has to so you know we gave stock trick or, or the point of sale system that i use the time to develop their um, inspection and they did they came out with something they launched it a year after that um and and it didn't work very well they quickly pulled it back um relaunched it again about a year later um and um it was right around sometime in 2019 when we finally got um, it working. Now I had worked with them 
throughout the year in 2019 to get it to where it was to where it would work as a digital inspection. But um, by the time it was ready to go, I want to say it was right around November. It was like the first of November 2019. Um, but we use that for a while. Um, and the digital inspection, you know, it made it easier for the technicians to do what we wanted them to do, which was to completely inspect every vehicle that come into the shop. Um, so, you know, kind of mission accomplished there. Um, on the same time, you know, I was, you know, young and, and learning from the technician and, and, and manager point of view from the owner point of view. And, and, and I was really trying to and still, you know, to this day, we're still writing processes and procedures and making sure that those standard operating procedures are defined and, um, and that we have them in place. So going back way back, we, we had a paper that we printed out, um, actually had them printed because they were too big for me to print. And, and we would track every time a car would come in, uh, we'd write it on the board, um, eventually assign it to a technician by drawing their initials, you know, on it. And then, you know, we order parts and, you know, OR for O'Reilly's and, and then kind of black them out with a marker as, as they left the shop. Um, yeah, it looks that was, like this, huh? Let's <laughs> see if I can, let's see if I can increase my screen sizes. Yeah. And that worked for us for a while. Um, but then Google, I, I discovered um, Google Sheets, right? Where you could have a, a shared spreadsheet or a shared um, document. Um, so what we did then is we evolved that um, paper spreadsheet that tracked all of our, you know, movements or, or like I like to say, steering the ship, you know, we could steer the ship with this um, shared Google spreadsheet that I created. And um, basically same situation where, yeah, as you can see there, um, that, that spreadsheet. So on the top left corner, we would record all the cars coming in. We would, um, you know, uh, dispatch them by copying and pasting that to each one of the technicians, you know, areas. And then, you know, and yada, yada. So th we had this, another platform on. And, and that was all something that you des developed though. Yeah. 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 I did that. Yep. I made it. And I have, I had colors built into it so that, you know, when you, you type the word sold in the, in the, the right box, it would turn green. So the technicians <laughs> could conditional see it from. Formatting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Conditional formatting. Yeah. So we had some some stuff like that in there to to help steer the ship, um, but I mean again, you know, taking a step from working off of just clipboards and you know, I, I I was talking with Tom before we started and I remember the day of, you know, we'd open the shop in the morning and you know of course we'd have a few customers come in first thing in the morning and I'd be up at the front counter you know writing up the customer. Uh, into the computer system and you know all of a sudden you look and you look to your right and all of a sudden you got three or four technicians standing there going oh, well, well, what are we working on today um it's just kind of nice to where we come now you know the technicians don't don't they don't have to come to the front counter the the technicians you know the carpet's a lot cleaner in the lobby because we don't have to worry about those boots <laughs> running the yeah, that's funny anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, carpet cleaning. Uh, come a long it. way <laughs> The cleaning crew comes only once a week now. Yeah. yeah. A digital side effect I've never heard before. <laughs> digital side effects. Yeah, we need to yeah. add that to the BCP. Yeah. Yes. That's that's a great adoption metric. You know, it's working when. Yeah. When, that's carpet cleaning. When carpet's cleaning and, the front and, you know, that's fantastic. And, and, you know, it's almost and like we were saying earlier, you know, it's a lot of people try to manage workflow in dispatch on a, on a sheet, you know, and have all, you know, a thousand different variations of that whiteboards and, you know, hanging bags and clipboard racks and, you know, and the problem with it always is, is as soon as somebody brushes up against that whiteboard and erases half of it, or you forget to update it, it's, mm -hmm. it's broken, you know, and, it, and then eventually you almost need, somebody who's hired to manage the whiteboard for you, you know, uh, yeah. and almost be, and it defeats the purpose. You're trying to become more efficient, more productive, but on the other hand, it's really starts to slow you down and it costs you more uh, from a business expense perspective. Well, and especially and, when you're trying to, when you're running more than one service advisor, you know, well, cause you know, back in the day when, when I did it, the whole, all of the service writing and all the customer communica communications, by myself, you know, 
that was one thing. It was still difficult to remember everybody you needed to call at the end of the day, or, you know, um, you know, you still had challenges, but there was only one guy to blame, right? You, you only had your service advisor or yourself to blame. When you start adding, you know, a receptionist, which we added, and then, and now a second service advisor, um, and, um, and now, we, you know, we're running with two service advisors and I try to, to not necessarily be a service advisor, but, you know, so you have a, potentially up to four people who are dispatching work, um, talking with customers and ordering parts and all that. It certainly makes it a lot easier to, to, to know what the other person's done already when, when you have the technician view screen, you know, the TVP, it's great for that. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we've had uh, quite a few episodes now with, you know, Adam and John Long and, and these guys talking about how that evolves really into the production manager as your volume increases or that need uh, for that specialization starts to, to uh, you know, increase. Uh, and it's like kind of in your progression, in your timeline of, because, you know, as we were talking yesterday, you're a uh, single location, but but not only, I think, uh, are you probably catching a lot of attention from the, at the corporate level with the performance of your location and your numbers, um, but you have the desire to become multi-center owner. Um, yeah. And it's really great to see because, you know, I mean, you couldn't set yourself up in a better position. You know, you're really establishing that strong foundation, putting the processes in place, bulletproofing them now. And then it becomes like just flipping a switch. How many do you want? I mean, it's similar to the Ramsey brothers, you know, where they've got it down so well in the, from the Meineke organization that, I mean, they're just throwing shops at them and it's just plug and play almost at this point. Right. right? Yeah. That's, and that's, you know, really been my goal throughout the last several years is get the, the systems and the procedures in place strong enough to where, you know, you know, I don't have to be steering the ship, you know? Um, so you teach that to the service advisor manager and, and, and you're able to step away and, and start acquiring that second, third and fifth, you know, store. Um, yeah, you know, Tommy, talk to us a little bit about, because this is what really intrigues me, because, you know, and just to be clear, so because we still didn't integrate, I mean, you've only been integrated now for a month, month, a couple of months. Uh, yeah, it's been a with, couple of months now. Yep. With your point of sale, right? Yeah. When you started in November 19, that was in, in our standalone or non-integrated version. And um, yeah, just and, a digital inspection. Yep. And so, yeah. And then, so then you had the spreadsheet you were still managing. Now on top of that, you have the digital inspection and, yeah. and getting everybody used to that. And I mean, so that's not easy. That's hurting cats right there. And so talk to us a little bit about how that transition and, 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 and what is the difference now, now that you're integrated and you've got not only the, the full, you know, kind of product suite, you know, and all the, all the bells and whistles, but yeah. you, you have to change process process changed again. How did that transition look like? And and for folks that you know are are kind of new or in you know and they're and they're grinding and they're and they don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. What's been the difference for you between those two? Um, well, it's it's a huge difference. Um, going from from a paper inspection or a, a paper write up to the digital inspection is is one humongous step, and then going to the technician view. Um, is an, is another just huge step. Um, you know, the, the digital inspection is nice because it, you know, and, and I can share some, some numbers. I don't know if we're ready to get into that, but, sure. um, you know, when I took over the store, you know, we were running right around a 200 to $250 ticket average. Right. And, um, as we, I told uh, maybe I think it was Bill and uh, I think I told all three of these guys the story. But when when I first took over the store and I was trying to find that inspection, like I talked about, getting the guys, getting my technicians to do what I want to do, those full inspections, I literally went to, I'm telling you, every every place in town I could, every everybody who did an oil change in an inspection, I was buying an oil change from them so I could get a copy of their inspection sheet, um, so I could you know repurpose it and try it right and see if my technicians would do that inspection form. And don't get me wrong, they did it, but um, it was never really complete. Um, and when we went to the, the, the digital inspection um, through the, the point of sale company, um, again, it was, it was being done and our ticket average went way up. 
um, or went up. But again, I don't, I had no way to know, well, was this part really being checked or was the technician just putting a check mark, you know, in that, in that box. With the auto vitals digital inspection, we require a picture for every failed part, right? And even for the not failed parts you, you could do. So when, when a technician says it's a good or bad part and they have to take a picture of that part, now you know, yeah, the technician absolutely put their eyes on it. They put their eyes on it enough to take a picture of it. So, you know, we just felt that we're getting a, uh, a better and a fuller inspection from it. And when we went from, and I, you know, so like I said, when I bought store, I was right, right between 200 and $250 um, average RO. Um, now in 2017, it was 296. We jumped over 300 in 2018. Uh, so it took me from 2014 to 2007 or 2018 to get to four years to jump that little, over, just about a hundred dollars per ticket. Um, and then, so we went from 314 in 2018 to $332 in, in 2019. And like I said, it was November when we launched that digital inspection. And in 2020, this year so far with a pandemic and and guys being out of work and people being out of work, our ticket average this year is, is $409.72. And that's as of, you know, year to date, as of yesterday, I ran that report. Yeah. Um, through November and so, over the last 90 days, it's $444. I was and over, just yeah. ATP this morning. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I put and we're that. getting better because, you know, to add onto that, when you, when you take and you do the program and you, you take and you, you know, we talked about some growing pains, right. And some um, trusting the system. That's kind of like what, what I teach my guys. Right. So I've told my guys from the beginning, you know, we're going to try this, whatever this is. And, and in this case, it's, it's a complete new program, right? Like, from the beginning to the end, what we ask the customer, what we talk to the customer about it at, at, at the counter, um, you know, communicating that they're going to get an inspection before a phone call, right? And then actually giving them the inspection before the phone call. Um, you know, we, we I don't know, several weeks ago now, maybe a month, maybe a little more than that. And Bill says to me, he says, Tom, all right, we're to the point now where I want you to start uh, sending the inspection to the customer and let them review it. And then you can give them that, you know, 10 minutes. If they don't open it, you call them. I think most of you guys are pretty familiar with it, but, and I said, Bill, you know, I don't, I don't think I like that idea, Bill. <laughs> I like to call my customers and I want to sell the customer a repair. And Bill says, you know, Tom, just, you know, um, trust, but verify, I think is what you say, Bill. Um, you know, you know, give me a chance. And uh, it, it was the second, inspection I sent to a customer before I called them. And, um, and so I, anyway, so I send the inspection to the customer and we're, and then she called me about 10 minutes later, just like Bill said she would. And she said, Oh, Tom, you know, I was looking over the inspection and I opened it up and I had my estimate all ready to go. So we go through all the, you know, she needed breaks and I think it was a, like an intake leak or whatever it was. And, and she, and so we got to the end and I gave her a total and she said, Tom, that's great. And I want to have all of that done, but you didn't say anything about the brake flush. Mm -hmm. And I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, and the, and, and the customer says, well, on the inspection you sent me, there was a, there was a brake flush needed. And I opened the inspection up. And when I was building the estimate, I completely overlooked that brake flush. Wow. Um, so it was neat to see and, and trust, but verify, but you know, I was able to see that Bill was right in this case. And, um, you know, it, you know, you really, it's been nice to kind of look at it a little bit different. And um, we know we've always just been informing the customer, educating the customer, letting them know what's wrong with their vehicle um, and letting them decide that's always been our approach. But this is even, even better because they can read it. They can do the, uh, the research and see, you know, why do I need a brake flush? Maybe she should be Googled it and she was very important to her. I, I don't know that, but um, it's nice to see that, you know, um, the systems that, that Bill and, and Autovise have taught us and that we've implemented, they've just worked tenfold. No, that's, you know, that's with the quality of the inspections between what you used to do and what your technicians are producing with the guided inspection. Can you talk about a little bit about, you know, their ease of adoption through that new process using that particular tool? 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's great with the guided inspection. It's nice because, um, you know, my favorite thing is 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 the pictures, right? Because, you know, um, pre-COVID, you know, our our program was, you know, get the customers in, get the vehicle inspected, get the customer in the shop, and show them what's wrong. And now we're still doing that. We're still getting the, the vehicle in the shop and getting it inspected and showing the customer what's wrong. We're just doing it in a, in a virtual way. So with the, di- with the guided inspection form, the nice part about it is as, as they go through the inspection form, you know, it, it says, you know, you know if, you, if you mark something as a failure, it shows you an example of what type of a picture you should take to support that type of a failure. And then also it has pre-written relevant customer notes. Um, and they're written so well that, you know, again, Bill and I talked up front and I said, well, you know, Bill, I think I'd like to write all the customer notes. <laughs> and Bill, Bill said, you're crazy. <laughs> you know, you don't want to exactly go through, <laughs> you don't want to go through all that. He says, just, you know, do a couple inspections, read the notes and see what you think. And, and truthfully, they're written in a way, um, that I just couldn't agree with more, you know, the, every, every note that a customer sees is they're a hundred percent spot on. I, I wouldn't, I, I haven't changed any of them. Yeah. And this is really kind of the, this is the, you know, the, the, the exciting part, right. You've, you've, you know, the, the year that you kind of went through non-integrated inspection, getting the inspection process down is great. It's great for the techs and building those, those habits, but now not only do you get access to the data, but then you get access to, to these other workflow features and communication features that, that really are going to allow you, I mean, the, the, the increase, you know, the 80% or 90% increase, whatever it is that you had in your ARO in this yeah. kind of in the beginning here is just, I'm, you know, I'm wondering where it's going to, where you're going to, you know, end up in the 600s, you know? Yeah. Well, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I hope and, and there's so, no limit to it. Hey, and um, so talk to us because here's another challenge. And just, I want to get, you know, so folks realize, you know, here's Tom came to us. We couldn't integrate. You know, he says, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'm going to work on the point of sale provider. I'm going to work on corporate. I'm going to work on auto vitals. And really it's what he did. I mean, it, gosh, it was probably six, eight months went by. And then we're all of a sudden, we're all sitting at the table together and we're having this, this discussion. And, and, and Tom drove it through the entire time. The other challenge, though, that you have is you're the type of operation in your customer demographic, right? We, you know, there's not a lot of, say, say tire centric or, you know, even tire service or quick lube uh, type operations that are running a full digital inspection and workflow management. I'm going to say it just takes too long. It's just not conducive. My customers feel like I'm trying to pressure or bully or, you know, whatever, uh, sell them stuff. Talk to us a little bit about how that's working out because you're really kind of blazing the trail as it comes to defining the best practices for converting a tire shopper into uh, purchasing yeah. uh, maintenance and repair. Well, and that's that's um, that's something that you just you know you train your customers on. Um, you know, new customers are are always going to need a little bit more time up front, and that's kind of like what I was talking about as far as you know when we brought this program on you know, it was a complete reboot, you know, from, from the words at the front counter all the way to, you know, the, the sales presentation. Um, so, you know, when you have a new customer come in, um, just, just train the, the person who's at the front counter to educate the customer of what to expect. You know, um, I found that, you know, over the years, you know, most, you know, you know, we're going to, we're going to all have those 10 percenters. I think everybody knows, you know, the 10 percenters, but you know, 90% of your customer base, 90% of the people that visit, you know, they want to know what's going on with their vehicle. Um, you know, so it's, it's a service. Um, now we provide the, the complete digital inspection at no charge to our customers. That's something that we've, um, we've always done from the beginning. And, um, and now we just, you know, that's, it's a huge. So like, even if somebody was coming in for just like mountain balance or something, bought some tires online, coming in mountain balance and and you're going to knock out the full digital inspection. You tell them that up front. Now, have you found that it scares them away or that they, that there's any negative feedback? Um, You know, there are going to be some people and and we have had some people that, that shied away a little bit. 
Um, but when you explain to them that, you know, look, my job, you know, and this is the way I approach it is, you know, our job is to inspect your vehicle and educate you, let you know what you have going on. At that point, it's completely up to you, Mr. or Mrs. Customer. You know, um, sure. if, if, you know, you're here for tires and we find that you need ball joints, I'm going to tell you about it because it's going to wear these tires. If you want them, we'd be happy to do the repairs for you. If not, then we're going to provide you with this report that tells you the state, you know, the health of your vehicle. Um, so, so yes, up front, I, I mean, there, there are some people who, you know, um, you know, we're, you know, like, um, I'm trying to think of how to say, it. like, you know, the, the, the people go to the, the, the shop and they say, you just tell them, you know, all you're here for is them tires, you know, and, and dad, my dad said, all I want are these tires. Right. And, and, you know, that's okay. Yeah, that's great. You know, all we're going to do is your tires today, but while it's in, I'd like to give you something for free. And that's the way, and we do it for free. Right. So that's, that's why we do it for free because we just want to give it to everybody. Um, and, and let them decide, you know, we, you know, I, I work hard on keeping the lobby clean and looking good and comfortable and, and not real shoppy, more of, um, you know, a comfortable space to wait and watch TV and, and, you know, we have plants and flowers yeah. and yeah. drinks, you know, and, and so, you know, it's all about comfort and, and making the customer feel that, you know, one, they're not being taken advantage of, you know, cause we would, ne we, you never want to take advantage of a customer. And, you know, unfortunately in the automotive repair business, we have this little bit of a reputation from, you know, whoever gave us that reputation. So we have to overcome that. And we overcome that by, you know, transparency. That's, that's what it is. So with the digital inspection, you know, you, you let them know up front, this is what I'm doing and this is what you can expect. Um, you know, we have customers that uh, come in and they say, you know, Hey, I need an oil change. I need it right now. How long? Okay. We can do it for you. It's going to take about 45 minutes and uh, you know, Whoa, 45 minutes for an oil change. Well, it's not just an oil change and some customers, they, they won't even wait for it. You know, you'll get one a month that just, you know, they're not into it. And that's okay too, because <laughs> right, because there's 15 or 20 the door for you. <laughs> right behind them that are that want yeah. the good quality um, experience and service, and um, and then you know the oil change, you know we kind of view the oil change as a as a as a you know necessary side thing. You know the main thing is is the inspection and the way we treat the customer and present it to them. Yeah, and plant the seeds. You know, yeah. Uva, you know, I know you worked uh, directly with Tom for, for quite a bit, Linda, and kind of was really really involved in the process to, to integrate and to develop. And I know you kind of came out of it pretty excited and you had a lot of, because that's, you know, I've known Uva for a long time now and I know when Uva gets inspired and then Uva gets on a, you know, it starts inventing stuff in his sleep even. Um, and, and I know, you know, when you came out of it, you really inspired, I think, to tackle the tire, the challenge of, of tire operations. And I know, you know, Tommy, you're, you know, you guys are, tire and service and probably moving away um, as much as, as possible from being tire centric and being seen as a service center. And there's still a lot of people out there though that are trying to follow that lead, right? That are trying yeah. to make that transition. So if you could talk to us a little bit about where do you see, you know, what are the big challenges and, and, and how do you, from, from the inventor's perspective, right? Uh, seek to, to, to solve those. Yeah, thanks. Um, I mean, Tom described it pretty well already. Um, people have a certain goal coming in, and then a comprehensive inspection wouldn't fit in the time schedule. And if, if the usefulness of the results is not clear to the customer, you can spin your wheels and you not get follow up work, right? And and, and so we basically were trying to help. I mean, there's no replacement for 
selling the value of an inspection results to the customer, right? That needs to be done in some fashion. The service advisor at the counter, an example, Tom, do you have an example of a good inspection results hanging around somewhere or bookmarked on a, on a screen and show it or something like that? Because people are normally super impressed by the visual, oh, this is what I'm going to get for my car, right? And then most people say yes, because yeah. of that, right? And, but, but back to Tom's point, uh, Tom, can I call you Dorsey so we can sure. distinguish? Uh, <laughs> And whatever you the, want, thing one and thing uh, two. <laughs> and um, so we did guide it, and Bill mentioned it already, and we talked about it because it really helps expedite a lot of steps and, and keeps even on the pressure of the process consistent. But the other thing we've done is split the inspection into two parts, and and if there's really a adamant customer says that's exactly what I'm here for do 15 instead of 50 inspection points. Right. So the 45 minutes is going to be 20. Right. Right. And, and present it and make sure those items cover the safety items, because I don't know how Michigan's laws are, but um, you might be, liable for a non-detected safety issue when you let the car off the uh, lot. I, I don't know how that is in, in Michigan, right? Yeah, so so there, should be, there, should, there, there should be at least um, some safety checks involved. Um, yeah. and, and so long story short, guided makes it super simple for technicians under pressure and service advisors under time pressure and um, structure the inspection result, uh, the inspection sheet in a way that you can do it in stages, do a short 15 point first, present it to the customer and invite them to do the rest, right. showing a full comprehensive inspection result, well, how valuable the, that is. Yeah, and to your point there, um, like for example, with the brakes and the brake inspection, right. you know, that's, that's a, a great, area that you can talk about where you know it's something you know we do free tire rotations with an oil change for customers and the reason we do that is because we want the wheels off so we can easily right. see the brake right <laughs> so we get the customer on that every other or or however they want to do it but you know if the wheels aren't coming off in it and you know a lot of technicians probably on and and listening to this you know a lot of us know you can look through the wheel and you can get an idea of the condition of the brakes but um with the inspection form, the guided inspection form, it doesn't necessarily, you know, when it, when a technician marks that the brakes need attention, it doesn't say, Hey, your brakes need to be replaced. It says, Hey, your brakes need a complete brake inspection. Yep. You know, so when that, when the customer gets that now they're, you know, you're not, so you're not jumping into a necessarily a sale on everything. You're, you're identifying areas that need attention and then you can have that conversation with the customer, you know, and that customer might say, Oh, well, great. Thanks. But you know, my son is a, you know, he's a certified brake technician, but that's all he knows. Right. So, you know, you get all different kinds of things out there, but at least, you know, you mark, you identify the system failure and the customer, and then you can have that discussion with the customer to do a more of an in-depth inspection in that, on that system or that, you know, that part of that failure. And Tom, if you could talk a little bit about from an operational perspective, right? Because a lot of times, you know, uh, you know, you hear from, gosh, we just don't have the time or, or do you have kind of like a teamwork thing set up where maybe I'm the guy who's, you know, pulling the, 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 the wheels off and I'm going to go balance. And while I'm on the balancer, maybe the guy next to me comes and just knocks out those, uh, you know, brake measurements and, and a couple of pictures. And then yeah. he goes back to what he's doing. And, and what I'm getting at is it's so from a, from a quick volume, high volume type perspective, we can still get pretty comprehensive, yeah? If we work in those types of stages. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how you have that set up in your shop from an operations perspective. Well, you know, um, for an operations perspective in our shop, we, we recently kind of reworked the way um, bonuses happen, right? So 
Um, I believe that everybody in the shop should have a, an opportunity to make a bonus. Um, previously, we worked on um, more as an individual bonus structure. Now, everybody has their own little bonus structure, but they go into bonus, we, we go into a bonus at, at, as a shop. So when we, we hit our 10% uh, over break even, is when, when bonus starts kicking in and then they have milestones, right, that, that we have to make in there um, based on sales and gross profit. So, so that's one thing that we did to, to increase the, the teamwork aspect of it. Now, managing it um, has always been a challenge. And, and this is something I tried probably two years ago. It didn't really work out. So we went back to individual bonus structure. And now with Auto Vitals, um, with the fully integrated system, every technician has their own device and we use the iPads, um, but, but everybody has their own iPad. So if I know, because I'm at the front counter, I can see that a, that a customer is at their limit, right? Like we all know the, the pace that keep looking up at you while you're sitting at your computer, right? We all know those, those uncomfortable uh, body language things, right? So we can see that. And from that point, we can simply just type a message to that technician saying, hey, I want you to go help, you know, technician A, um, B, technician B, go help technician A, finish this inspection up, help him get these tires balanced or whatever. Um, their alarm goes off on the iPad out there. They get the message. They select the tea time that says they're assisting another technician and they're, they're off, you know? Um, so, you know, that's, that's been huge. Um, it's just easy to communicate with the guys what the next step is, um, you know, on the, on the, the technician view page, um, you, the little icons that pop up, I worked with Bill to make an icon for each one of our suppliers. So like O'Reilly's, we have a little O'Reilly's and it's green and Napa's blue. So when the parts are coming from a certain vendor, we can indicate that, that to the technician. Um, we also, one of the things that we did too, is we have an, on either end of the shop, in the shop, we have a big screen TV that also shows, has the technician view page up on it all the time. So, you know, we make those changes just at a glance, the technician can look up and see, oh, my parts are coming from O'Reilly's without necessarily going back to their, you know, iPad on their cart. You know, they can see what's coming next um, and they can view it on their, on their iPad as well. Um, Having a scoreboard at either end of the field. It's, right. it's, right. it's cool, man. I'm telling you. Right. <laughs> oh, and, and, you know, and, and I think it's, it's brilliant, right? Is, you know, when you structure your bonus plan that way, now everybody's involved and everybody's pulling to the same goal. And that's when that board starts to make a lot of, you know, it gets a lot of use mm -hmm. because yeah. now we're really paying attention to it because we're driving for that, you know, production bonus and, and everybody's, you know, like you said, it's transparency, for the customer, but then there's also transparency internally in between team members. And that helps a, yeah. you know, it's just like being on a football team, right? You miss your block. Everybody's going to tell you about it in the next huddle. And then, right. and then you're going to go, you know, 110% the next play. Right. And that's really what happens. And so when you're introducing something like this, that can be very disruptive and it can be, you know, there's a lot of work before there's some payoff. That's why, you know, and I'm sure Bill's been working with you to achieve those quick wins. You probably heard quick wins, coming out enough yeah. from us uh, to say, hey, and then once they start paying off, you go, ah, I understand why they're driving those quick wins because that's what it takes for them to, you yeah. know, get the little taste, right? Uh, and then and then really uh, go after it hard. And so how's it been from from the tech's perspective? I mean, you, you introduce it, because I, I got to tell you, uh, you know, I'd really like to get a, a follow-up episode almost where we can bring in some of your guys and even interview them because, um you took a pretty hard road right you went through the non-integrated side of it and there's not a lot of data and you don't know if you're doing it right there's not a lot of help and you got to kind of just you know figure it out and and then to go into the guided where it's almost you know a yeah. are they like hey you know I, i've done all this work i'm i'm so expert at it now because of what i've been through i don't need this guided. or did they see it as you know, really a relief to have kind of the structure and the guidance around it and, and, and really be able to get, you know, a, a process in place as they, as they complete those inspections. 
I haven't had, I mean, and we're still, we still use the guided mode. We still use the guided inspection sheet today. Um, the technicians like it. They like, they, they, I've had no complaints as far as that goes. Um, you know, originally when we first went to the digital inspection, um, all my technicians were flat rate and, you know, their concern, you know, and, and, it, and if you have flat rate technicians out there and you're looking at it, making a major change that is going to, you know, cost them time, they're going to, they're going to be concerned about it. And, you know, so you might do something like we, we did, um, we did a one month, uh, you know, cause we do, we give free inspections. So we didn't, we don't pay on inspections, you know, as flat rate technicians. So, but you know, we, when we integrated the systems and we went to the digital, you know, I did, we, we gave them, you know, three tenths just to offset some of that. And it was only for a month. So the expectation wasn't for it to go forward past that first month. Um, you know, but the other cool thing is it, it tracks your times, right? So, so you can show a technician, Hey, you know, and, and start off, Hey, you're doing a paper inspection. How long does it take you to do the paper inspection? You know, and my guys were saying, they were telling me a half hour. Okay. All right, fine. Half hour. So in all fairness, when we get down to a half hour on a digital inspection, now we're even, we're breaking even. And if we can get it done faster than that, now we're all winning, right? Even you as a, as a flat rate tech. So, um, you know, and now I'd say the guys are, um, and I haven't looked at the report recently, but I'd say we're probably in the 15 to 20 minutes on a, on an inspection now. And, you know, and like I said, the inspections we're getting just to reiterate are way more complete, um, than they ever were before. And I'll add additionally to that, the inspections that we were doing digitally, before the guided inspection. So our guided inspection is 36 points. We, we touched 36 points. Before the guided inspection, it was 19 points. So, right? <laughs> yeah, so we went, we went from a 19 point inspection to 36 points and still, I'd say the slowest tech is still probably 10 minutes faster. That's incredible. See, that's, so, that's can, the can, can we revisit a few other numbers? I expect that we are gonna yeah. scream from the rooftops at the beginning of the. <laughs> so, so, so if if when we looked at your numbers yesterday, yeah. if we project and annualize everything, mm -hmm. your AOO increase enables you for five thousand dollars more revenue per week. Per week, yeah with less staff or the same yeah, staff and we're we are as of it was january 2020 we we down we yeah we lost one technician so we're right. one guy you know so we were running five techs and now we're running four and um and our average ro like i said it was it went up from 332 to 409 and so, you have about 60 50 60 cars a week right yeah we work it's about 60 cars yep. 60 cars and, and right? you're still I mean, maintaining that even being down to one tech yeah right. yeah and and like you said once we and and you said that number earlier but the average ro over the last whatever it was 60 days is even up yeah even up even more than that but right. you know over the year it's it's at 410 or 409 yeah so yeah it's huge we're we are we are going to be you know with everything that went on you know with covid and and you know all the different states out there had different shutdowns and different things happening to them and, and for us in michigan you know for a while there they pretty much shut everything down um we were down to just one technician and myself everybody else was laid off in april it got you know it was it was very slow um but even in and and you know just looking at some of those numbers um you know we still ran a 469 dollar ticket average in april you know but you got to remember where you know i have my my best technician the one who follows procedures exactly you know and myself right so the two of us doing the things that you know following the protocol following the procedures the way they're supposed to be done um you know we were able to see that high ticket average with a low car count which was one of the things that you know that helped us i mean it helped us get through that slow time so when you switch from your your um inspection uh, your uh, dispatching on the spreadsheet to the today's vehicle page 
you know, watching, you know, setting your goals for the technician, watching the green, yellow, red bars, communicating digitally. Talk about how you're using that differently and the type of data that you have right down to, you know, knowing where your technicians are in their goals on a daily basis, you know, not having to wait for the end of the day, week or pay period to find out they're short. Well, I mean, that's exactly right, Bill. We, we, you know, at first, again, it was, it, it was constant reminding, constant reminding the technicians and, and the beautiful part, I'm going to, I'm going to plug it again is you just type them a little message and then the alarm goes off and it says, yeah, Hey, pick a car or tea time. You got to be working on a car or a tea time. No activity is no good. Right. So, right. you know, just, you know, keeping the guys on that. And, you know, we talked about um, things like, Hey, the tea times are so important because, you know, especially talking about a flat rate technician who gets paid for what they do, you know, up front, my guys are like, I don't understand why I got to do this. It doesn't make sense to me. And, and it's like, well, I said, well, let's talk about something. Let's say yeah, everybody wants to make more money. You know, you, you ask any technician out there, they all want to make more money. So I say to my technician, you want to make more money. We can, after, you know, we do this and we do this correctly, we can pull those numbers. And when I pull those numbers, if I see that you're waiting on parts 20% of your day every day, right? Then I got to, procedurally, we got to fix something, right? But if it shows me that you're outside smoking cigarettes 20% of your day, well, then it's something you got to work on, right? So it's not, you know, I think it, it, for my guys up front, the tea time thing was a little bit, I don't want to say hard because just explaining it to them like that, they, it made sense. Um, but getting them to, to understand that it's, it's something that can be used to better the whole building, right? It's not, you know, we're trying to build this, this team, this environment where when, when I win as an owner, everybody wins. Right. And that's, that's the way I feel about it. That's the way I, I hope I portray myself to the guys and, and that's the way I treat them. So, you know, when we, like you said, Bill, you, you know, you add these tea times in, you want them to make sure they're selecting them um, because red is, is no good. So we want, <laughs> we want green. Um, you know, we, like I said before, we had, we, we give three tenths for an inspection um, when a car comes in. And the reason we did that, we changed it is, um, you know, and not that we're paying the flat rate technicians three tenths, but we add three tenths to the ticket so that when they pull an inspection up, it shows green for three tenths, right? And after that, that three tenths, it goes red. So that we can monitor that. So, you know, like say as a as a service advisor trying to steer the ship, you know, you're you, you know, like Bill says, you're trying to keep service advisor on the perch, and and you can monitor that. Now I can monitor, you know, like when I was out with COVID, I I was out of the shop for 11 days, and and you're able to log in from home, and I can I can watch what's going on. Um, and fire but, of the chats. And, and fire off the chats right from home. Right. Um, and, and likewise though, you know, I would have pre pre my little um, quarantine, I would have said, yeah, we're, we're procedurally 100%. Right. Um, but I had to stay home for 10 days and I, I wasn't in the building. Um, and, and previous to that, I like to think, yeah, my guys did their thing. My, my, my manager and my service advisor, they, they do it. I don't do it. Um, but I've built, you know, we ran a number this morning and, and we looked at it and, you know, um, my ticket average was down. The ticket average was down under, under 400 those 10 days. Right. And, um, and so I told Bill, I said, Bill, well, uh, you know, I got to, now I know that, you know, it's time to, I got to retrain, you know, we just got to, we got to retrain. We got to go over the policies and the procedures one more time. And Bill says, well, you don't got to start at the beginning. That's the good news is now, you know, and we ran some reports and, and Bill says, well, it was, it, you know, when you were out, um, the inspections weren't getting done a hundred percent and we were right around a 50% inspection. I think you said, Bill, right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so now that I'm back, all of a sudden the inspections are getting done again. So, you know, it, you know, from an, an owner's perspective or for me, like, like you had mentioned earlier that I am looking to be, you know, going to the multi-store ownership and I have to be able to see, know those things, you know, right now um, and be able to address them 
And it's, it's so powerful to be able to spend that time, that little bit of time he has as a multi-store owner to address what's important or what's actually the, you know, the, the symptom was the sales were down, right? But the cause of that failure was, was incomplete inspections, you know, it, so we were able to identify that without retraining the whole staff. Exactly. Yeah. And you don't have to go through, you know, digging through videotape or, you know, security camera footage or nope. going in and calling them in individually and reading them the riot act and, nope. and all of that. You get to go right into the data, right to the meat and potatoes and see exactly what needs to be done and take an action. And then, you know, and that's what keeps, that's what, key, that's what helps to develop that muscle memory. Cause that's where you're at, right. Is you've gotten a, kind of develop and, and get them bought in so that, that, you know, it happens automatically. And once you're at that point, yeah, then you can just kind of, you know, review as, yeah. and, and there's less review. enforcement that, that's required. Mm -hmm. can, can I, can I switch topics a little bit? Because I'm super curious about how you deal with people who just come in for tires. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it, it's about earlier. It, it kind of similar to oil change, right? It's one of those things well, where, the, yeah, the, there's not a lot of margin in it. And, and so specifically, how do you make them um, curious about the inspection? And number two, do you use any device to measure tread depth or otherwise hunter or similar things? Or do you use manual tire gauges? Or how do you deal with tire customers? Um, well, tire customers are a little bit different. Um, you know, it, they still get the inspection, but they don't typically get the inspection until it's in the building. Um, you know, so, so, you know, a lot of our tire, a lot of the tire business comes shopped on the phone, you know, so customers will call, Hey, how much for this size tire, right? It, whatever. And we, and we still try and, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to tell them what the price of a tire or any repairs over the phone. I'm not afraid to do that. It's not my first line of defense, right? I, I want to try, I always want to get the, the car here, right? That's, of course. that's number one. We have all, we've always known that, right? Um, but with the tire customer, you know, and I, and it just yesterday, um, we had a, a customer who we haven't seen in a while, but she came in the store and she said, Hey, I need tires. Um, and I had a car on every bay. And so the way I handle is I, I grabbed the, the manual tire gauge, uh, tread depth gauge. And I went out in the parking lot and just did the quick tire inspection for, um, and, uh, she, you know, we talked about different kinds of tires or whatever, and the tire she wanted, we had to order. Um, and they came in this morning car was in, you know, she dropped it off this morning as well. And that's when we went through and did the complete inspection on it. Um, it's hard to, um, it's hard to get, the time with a vehicle to do a complete inspection before you have, and you know, unless now the other thing you can do is when you go out to look at the tires, if you do go out in the parking lot or if the customer says, Oh, just my right front is like wearing real uneven. You can sell them on an inspection based on that uneven tire wear. Exactly. You know, because to talk about buying a, a set of tires, even on a, I mean, it was a Chrysler 200 and she had $600 in tires, right. Before the alignment. Right. So, you know, if, if you're fortunate enough to see some uneven tire wear, that's where my conversation tends to focus, not necessarily on the tires. Again, the worn tire is a symptom. Um, we want to know what's causing it. So you take and the approach. We know that we know that you need tires. How can we help you protect that investment? Yes, right. exactly. Right. Because, and, and I'll tell them, look, I don't I don't want to just sell you tires so they can wear out in a year and you can be back and I can buy another set of tires. And you know, that's right. not what my job yeah. is. They're, they're designed to last 70,000 miles provided the suspension can support those tires for 70,000 miles. Yeah. And that's why, you know, it's really important if you have them like your uh, Hunter quick check or, you know, even the groove glove or some of the other mm -hmm. visual tire, um, uh, you know, testing tools is so great. Uh, the ones that we integrate with that we can put right into the inspection results. Cause once they see that visual modeling of how that tire is uneven, and then it starts to all make sense, right? Oh yeah. The tie rods here, or these bushings or whatever it might be. Uh, the need for the alignment uh, becomes, you know, um, 
evident, right? It's right. It, you just can't argue with it. And it's funny, I was thinking that when you were talking earlier about how, you know, the, the dad will send the kid down, you just get the tires. And then, you know, the guy knows it all about cars and then comes home with the digital inspection and goes, hey, did they let you leave with those bushings? <laughs> well, why didn't, why didn't he fix that? You know, yeah. you're going to flip them just like that because, yeah. uh, you know, hey, I know everything about cars, right? And, and it's true, you know, um, we had a, a customer who, you know, again, when we first started doing the, the digital inspections and sending the, sending them, you know, like Bill said, sending them out. I had a, a customer who called me and he was, he says, you know, oh, you got notes on this inspection about the check engine. You know, I just had it in for brakes or whatever the other the suspension or whatever it was. And I explained to him, I said, look, that's okay. That's, that's what we're working on. This is, you know, this is a service that we're giving. This is a gift, right? This is everything we found on your vehicle. We understand this is maybe the budget's not there. Maybe the, you know, but now you have information that you didn't have before. And that's because you're our customer, you know, there's no, you know, and, and, and it turned into, we ended up doing a bunch more work for him because, you know, but at first when he called, he was upset because he felt he didn't know it was going to come. And so that's why it's so important up at, yeah. you know, at the counter to, to prep them for that. They don't know it's going to come. If they don't know, you know, what to expect, I mean, it's just like anything else. If you, you know, if you were going into surgery and you didn't know what it was going to be like, I mean, it would freak you out. But if you knew everything, what to expect, you know, oh yeah, well, the doctor said this was going to happen or that, you know, so it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Now you got to set them up, you know, you got to, you got to, like you said, it's the transparency and, and also it's educating that customer. This is the type of shop we run. You're going to have this service every time you come in and right. what you do with it. I mean that, you know, I'm not going to twist your arm or I can't twist your arm. But I am going to provide you with the information and it, and, it, and it covers not only that motors from a safety perspective, but also your business, right? Is hey, yep. we looked at these things. We documented this. We told you these things. Um, you, should have, you should have fixed it. <laughs> you know? Having the, the time and date stamped on the pictures yeah. right in the system is brilliant. I mean, it's. So one of the things that Uba actually said just a minute ago is really important to realize. We always talk about building trust with the pictures. But if you go ahead and take into consideration that if you have a like the um, Groove Glove or Hunter or whatever, a picture with a measurement not only is building trust, but it's something that can be verified and repeated if they want to go get a second opinion somewhere else. So, you know, having that picture with the measurement on it that can be acquired really quickly, you know, is worth a hell of a lot more than even a picture that we already know is highly valuable. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Gosh, we're at the top of the hour, guys. We've got about three minutes left. Um, you know, if anybody didn't get your questions in or, or you know, have uh, comments or questions, uh, chat them in, hit that uh, chat button or the Q&A. Oops, I got a question in and here I am. I'm, I'm answering it. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, asking to publish the inspection sheet. Um, so we'll get that out to you and, and uh, it'll be in the link there. Um Tommy, I really I, I believe I believe Tom is actually using the autovitals.x vehicle health yep. inspection in the library. Yep. That's the guided cool. form that we're using. Yep. Yeah, the guided one. Yeah, the guided and, one. And yeah, we added that's... to it, Bill. Remember, we added the uh, exhaust onto it. So it went from 30 to 36 points. We added a couple things. Oh, just because you live in a rust area. Yeah, we live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but for all of you shops that live in the Rust Belt, you know, right there in your library. And, you know, and I was going to bring that up earlier when you were talking about that, how you went in secret shop to collect all of those inspection results. It's another kind of side benefit of being an Auto Vitals customer is we have a huge library and folks like Tom and, uh, you know, everybody else out there. And thank you uh, if you've done so. You can share your inspection uh, sheet. And so when you're new or when you are looking for specialization, it's nice to be able to go in and see, you know, this shop did a heavy duty inspection an electrical uh, suspension inspection uh, and created those. And then you can just add and subtract things like you added exhaust uh, and make it your own. And so not only do you get a great perspective of how other people are doing it and how other shops are kind of thinking and solving those problems, uh, but you get a big head start, you know, and it's a lot less work to get it done. Um, oh, yeah. Now, tackling the, the, you know, recreating the guided inspection is a whole other animal. Um, but, I mean, the payoff is huge uh, when you look at, at the, you know, the potential that you get out of, of, of doing that because, you know, you're adding the images and you're adding the notes and you're adding all of those things that are can to help the technician become more efficient. Um, and so, you know, it's, 
it's really a good investment in time uh, because the payoff, you know, is evergreen, right? As long as you continue to use it, it's going to continue to pay for you, uh, pay off for you. So uh, don't be shy. And then, of course, talk to your Auto Vitals advisors. You know, they're, they're old hats at this stuff. They're going to help you out. They're going to give you good guidance. Get in the Facebook forum and ask some questions. Don't be shy because folks have gone through it. Um, and they're going to give you a point in the right direction, help you to avoid some of them pitfalls and give you some really good tips on how to create the most comprehensive and effective inspection, uh, you know, program, if that's what you're looking to do. Um, Tommy, anything else before we get, I mean, you know, I, I could, like I said, I could do a whole other show. We, we've only just kind of scratched the surface really on, on some of the, you know, I think really the insights that you can provide and that you are providing, uh, through kind of this you know, take no prisoner attitude, you know, decided I'm going to, I'm going to have this thing and nobody's going to tell me no. And then here yeah. we are. Uh, and it's really, like I said, I'm really excited to see the next level. I mean, we're already at four and a half. I, 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 I you know, six and a half, I think is, you know, right around the corner once yeah. you really get all those processes in place. And it sounds like you've got a great team uh, awesome. in there backing you up. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's huge. You know, having a great team, um, just explain, you know, being, you know, for me to just, you know, my advice would be um, to, to new, new people who are going to be using this or, or thinking about onboarding with it is, you know, just be honest with your, your staff about what you're trying to do, what your goals are, um, get them involved in it. And, and Bill's favorite thing, you know, trust, but verify um, the systems are there, they work. Um, but like, you know, Bill says, don't take my word for it, prove it. And, and they do. And, and, and over and over, Bill has proved to me and, and auto vials has proved to me that, you know, that the programs there, the systems work um, and, and they've proven it and I've proven it to be true in my shop. Yes, buddy. That's trust that's the true. systems. Proof is in the pudding. <laughs> Proof is in the pudding. So, you know, Tom, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, you know, we're excited to have you on and really get this kind of story told. And I'm glad we got it done, buddy. I mean, yeah. it, 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 you know, it, uh, we've only just started. We got yeah, plenty we, more to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be careful what you wish for. Now the heavy lifting starts, but but it's good lifting. You know, it's 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 building those muscles and preparation for multi uh, centers and just you know continued success, man. I, I mean, it's not like I got to wish you anything. You know, it'd be hard to stop you. I would imagine you're like a, a dog off the chain, and you're gonna go get it. So, um, looking forward to having you back on and kind of follow up to see where you increase. Maybe we'll give you a few months, sometime in the summer, or something, bring you on and, sure. and see where we're at. You know, because. Uh, that's good stuff. Uwe, you got anything awesome. before we get? No, I'm I'm blown away, um, Tom. It's really heartwarming to see that, like Tom said, you didn't you don't take no for an answer and just show it in a really really short period of time. You know what's possible, and and you haven't even scratched the surface, right? Right. And that's just you know all the time. Um, we spend, um, and I hope I talk for Bill too, you know, with, with results like that. Congratulations. Thank you. As long as he keeps scoring them touchdowns and then moving the goalpost, then I'm, I'm happy for him. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it makes it all, makes all that time and effort worthwhile, right? Is we get to see another great success story, American small business, you know, and, and for all you other Telfy locations out there, if you're in a similar franchise, it doesn't have to be franchise. You think you're in a, a quick serve type business and you can't sell that maintenance and repair right. Here's the guy who's going to prove you wrong. Follow in his footsteps, you know, just take that leap. We like to say, Reach out to us. Reach out to Tom Braun. He'll he'll tell you all about it. He's not shy. You can find him Tuffy in Clinton Township, Michigan. Google him and give him a call. Uh, reach out on Facebook for him. Talk to other folks that are in the same uh, boat and just see what, what the potential is. Give it a shot. I mean, what's worse going to happen? Doesn't work for you? Okay. You know, you tried. Find something that will. Tom Braun did. You know, he said, I'm going to do, I'm going to make this work for me. And here we are. And, you know, I mean, 80 90 percent increase in aro actually with less uh sir, with less people on the team same car count i mean that's all money that he's hauling to the bank getting ready to open up multi locations uh you can do it too you just gotta pick up the phone and and get started so um okay next week right. we're gonna have jill trotta on coming to us from repair pal we're gonna be talking again a nice segue off of this we're talking transparency we're talking digital consumer transparency and how important it is and why you can't avoid it and you can't fight it 
just like your digital inspection, it's helping you. Uh, we want to see, you know, a digital consumer really wants to see that full bit of transparency and the good shops that are out there take advantage of that. Uh, and so we're uh, excited to have Jill Trotta on next week. Tune in for that 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, get out there and make some more money like Tom Braun did. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank Thanks, you. Guys.